What's up guys, Justin here with the RenderingEssentials.com back with another twin motion tutorial for you. So in today's video I wanted to talk a little bit more about decals and how you can use them to add realism really quickly to your renderings inside of twin motion. So let's go ahead and just jump into it. Alright, so you might have used these before, but basically what decals are is decals are objects that you can place on surfaces inside of twin motion. So I've got a very simple example model in here. It's just a concrete wall with asphalt next to it and I wanted to kind of walk through um, what you can do with decals and uh, that sort of thing. So the first thing is to find decals. You can go under the furnitures section of your library on the left hand left hand side. You're going to want to look for the option for decals. And you can see how there's a number of these that come with twin motion. I do want to know as far as I know there is currently not a way to add your own decals. So you can't add these in. You can only use the ones that are contained inside of twin motion. But basically what decals are is they're images that get applied to faces inside of twin motion in order to add different effects. So for example, if I was to add in this street crossing decal, you can see how what this is doing is this is taking a street or a um, street crossing image and it's applying it on top of this other material. So it's applying it on top of this asphalt paving material that we have in here. So we can use this in order to simulate things on surfaces. So, and they work a lot like normal objects work in the sense that you can use the you can use the different movement and rotation tools in order to adjust them. So you can see I can kind of adjust this this way. I can move it up and down if I want to. You can also scale them, but you have to use the tools inside of the decals section. But you can see how you can use this to add a lot of different detail to different things inside of your rendering really quickly. And so this can be especially helpful if you're working with things like paving or concrete, because if you don't break things like this up, up, um, long uninterrupted stretches just don't look very realistic inside of renderings. So you can use these decals not only to add realism but also to break up different faces inside of your rendering to make them look more real. And so um, from an option standpoint, there's a bunch of different options on how you can adjust these. So we already talked about how you can kind of move them around. So you just drag them onto the face that you want, and then you can use this tool to move them around. There's also tools down below that allow you to do things like adjusting their size. So you can make them bigger or smaller. So you can see I can use this to make this object bigger or smaller depending on what I'm trying to do. And one thing about this is not only inside of your size section, can you make it overall uniformly bigger or smaller? You can also use these sliders to make, you can make use these uh, sliders to make these bigger just on the X or the Y axis as well. So you can see how I can make this wider or longer using this tool. Now I will note when you do this, um, if you're doing things like striping, you may not want to do it this way because what this does is this scales this up, but it kind of distorts the image that's in there. So you can see how this stripe, for example, looks very different than this stripe because this one's been stretched and made bigger. So I, I would say um, if you're trying to make things a little bit bigger, then that's great. You can use the scale tools. But if you're trying to do something like making this striping super long, you may want to consider repeating this instead. So using the uh, using copy mode in order to create copies. So you can just hold the shift key and then copy this um, that way. And so the opacity is going to allow you to set how strong an effect is. So if we were to scroll down, for example, and we were to look at like this graffiti object. So if we wanted to put a graffiti object on the wall right here, we could take this and we could place this on here. And you could make this look like kind of a faded graffiti object by turning the graffiti or the opacity down, or you could make it look super fresh by turning the opacity all the way up. So you can basically set how much of the material behind it is going to show through with that opacity slider. And so you can also use this when you combine these effects. So for example, there's an option down here below where we have a damaged wall effect that goes on top of this. Well, you could drag this damaged wall effect on top of this which, by the way, I really like these damage effects that we have in here, but you could adjust this 
you could adjust this so that it's completely opaque and it'll block out the material behind it. So you can also adjust how strong those damages are as well. So in this situation, you'd probably want this one to be pretty opaque because you want it to look like um, the concrete material came off after the graffiti was applied. So you can also adjust the offset of these different objects. And so basically the way that the offset works is let's say that I had a leaking rust that I wanted to have on this wall. Well, what this is doing is this is taking an object and applying it to a face as almost like a sticker that you're putting on the wall. Well, the problem with this is depending on your wall, sometimes um, for whatever reason, this isn't gonna show through. You can use the offset to adjust how well that shows through. Now, that being said, you need to be a little bit careful with this one because if you adjust that too high, it doesn't do anything really if this is like up off the ground. But if we were to move this down, you can see how when I adjust that offset really high, you're getting kind of some extra stuff on the ground. And a little bit of that might be okay. I mean, I would try to avoid it because I don't think it looks very realistic. But a lot of that is really going to add these weird streaks to places where your decals kind of intersect with other objects. So you can use the offset to make sure that these are actually showing up on your walls, but don't use it so much that you get those weird lines at the bottom of the wall. And so one of the cool things about decals is you can actually stack them together. So let's say, for example, that we wanted multiple different pieces of graffiti on this wall. So what we can do right now is this is a little bit confusing right now because you've got your first piece of graffiti on the wall right here. And then below that, you've got your concrete kind of spalling off of the wall. Um, so you can see how you can place that. And then we've got a new fresher piece of graffiti right here, but it's also kind of behind where the where the concrete is spalled off. Well, let's say I wanted to create the effect where we had an older piece of graffiti and then some wall damage and then a new piece of graffiti. Well, you can use the sort order in order to adjust where this is going to show up. So you can see how if I drag this up, um, the further up you drag something, the closer to the front it's going to be. Um, the further you drag it down, um, the further back it's going to be. So if we wanted to, we could take all of these and like for example this graffiti here we could set this to look as if the graffiti got added after the wall damage by adjusting the sort order so you can use this slider to adjust what objects going to be on the front and what objects going to be on the back inside of your renderings and so just a few other things i kind of wanted to walk through some of the options that you have in here just so you kind of know what you can do with uh, with different decals inside of your renderings. So I really like both the puddles and the stains because they allow you to break up big uh, sections of pavement like this. So you can add a puddle and you can see how the cool thing about the puddle material is light actually reflects off of this. So if you wanted to add like an extra puddle in a rainy scene or something like that, you can use these effects in order to do that. So, and again, it just kind of breaks this up and makes this look a little bit more realistic. So I find all of the damage and the stains in here, I think they look really good. So I think they really add something whenever you add them to your scene. So the stains just kind of sit on top, but then like, let's say that you had like a cement patch or something like that. Um, you could put that on here as well, maybe scale it down a little bit. And one thing I might do with this one is I might turn that opacity down so that it shows up in here, but it doesn't like super stand out like it was right there. But all of these, the road damage, I think really looks good when you place that on your road. It doesn't a really good job of simulating road damage so if you throw a little bit a little bit of this inside your streets or stuff like that when you're uh, when you're rendering it just adds to that realism and again it's a really good way to break up these uninterrupted pieces so like here for example we might add an asphalt patch as if someone had come through and maybe cut this out to do some utility work or something like that so you can see how adding these is really easy and it really adds to your scene and then um, like these leaking waters, these are really great for adding the effect like you get a lot of water and this concrete's really dirty. So you can use this to add that effect to the top of your wall. And so if you want to, you can kind of combine effects. So I could put like this streaky rust in here and this may not be the best one for a piece of concrete. Um, maybe what you would do is go back and use 
your damaged wall again. And in this case, we'd probably scale it down and maybe even rotate it on the wall just so it doesn't look the same as what we have over there. But you can see how these all integrate pretty seamlessly in order to create really, effect, or, um, really realistic effects. Now I will say um, one thing that you need to be considerate of is you need to make sure that you use the right effects. So like for example, this effect right here, it's a brick wall showing through in the background. And I'm gonna adjust that offset just a little bit so it's not really hanging off the walls there. But this is a brick wall showing through in the background. Well, in this situation, that probably wouldn't make sense because this looks like a concrete wall. So I would say probably don't use this particular effect on this wall. But just kind of think about what you're doing as you do it um, and just think, okay, if this was a concrete wall, what would this look like? What would the graffiti be? What would the stains look like? You can even look up reference images to kind of see how these walls look in real life. And then finally, there's a ton of different signs and options which again are just really good things um, they're really good things to add um, just to kind of break up these big long stretches again just like in real life so I would recommend like googling an image of a wall like this and seeing where the signs go and trying to replicate that if you're really going for realism so you can also use leaves leaves are another good way to break up um, break up big stretches like this. So just because again in real life um, there aren't big long uninterrupted stretches without something so using these leaves and these other things to break this up um, just really does add to that realism. And then finally, these last two, I'm not gonna talk about too much, but you can add a shadow effect in here. And one of the places where the shadow effect is really helpful is sometimes on your interiors, with your interior lighting, it doesn't cast the light maybe the way that you would like it to. Um, so some of your objects sometimes look like they're just kind of floating in space. Well, if you throw in a shadow decal like under a table or something like that, then uh, you can use that decal to simulate a shadow to make your interior renderings look more realistic. So that's where I'm gonna end this video. Leave a comment below, let me know what you thought. Have you been using the decals? Do you have any tips for how you integrate them into your scenes? I just love having that conversation with you guys. If you like this video, please remember to click that like button down below. If you're new around here, remember to click that subscribe button for new rendering content every week. As always, thank you so much for taking the time to watch this. I really appreciate it, and I will catch you in the next video. Thanks, guys.